Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Oshalay here. And in this video, it's gonna be a little bit different. So this is gonna be my summer reading list. It's not my personal summer reading list. I'm not reading these particular books this summer, at least I don't think so, who knows? I'm a mood reader, so I could always throw one of them in there. I'm always out of breath in these videos, it's so weird. Oh, I need to breathe. Anyways, <laughs> as I was stating, it's not my planned summer TBR, but I thought I would do a video with recommendations for summer reading for those of you that aren't really summer people. You know, you're not particularly loving the summer. It's not really your favorite season or, you know, it's really hot this year. I'm not sure where y'all are. I'm in the South. But throughout the United States, it's actually been extremely hot and we've been experiencing a heat wave. So wherever you are while you're watching this, maybe you don't like the heat or you just prefer the fall or the spring. I make this, I am making this video for y'all. Um, this is what I would like to call my anti beach reads typical summer reading list video. So these books are a little bit outside of the norm. They're a little bit more atypical. Hold on, you guys. Turned off my bark box. But these books are a little bit more outside of the box, a little bit more atypical for a summer reading list. I think I only have one book on here that is you know could be potentially considered a beachy read but without further ado let's jump right in and let's begin the first book i would love to talk about in this video is a room with a view by em forrester now i read this book years ago and i think i reread it um not even really recently i think i read it a really long time ago you guys and then i reread it about four years ago and I loved it even more the second time around and I've seen the film and I found it to be delightful and I enjoyed it so I really think for those who really like modern classics um, I guess now modern classics might even be a little bit more current or more recent but you would really enjoy this it is considered a modern classic and basically it is a classic tale of British middle-class love and it was first published in 1908. So you basically have Miss Lucy Honeychurch and she's kind of caught up in this world of just snobbery and elitism and just people trying to keep up with the Joneses and pretending to be things that they're not and trying to portray a certain lifestyle in order to, you know, pass themselves off or, or even if they are part of the upper echelon of class. And she can't really free herself from these guardians that she has. They are very just, they get, they're putting a lot of pressure on her, of, on their expectations, societal expectations. And she's just finding very hard to free herself from their guardianship, their suggestions for her life. So um, they basically encourage her. And by encourage, I mean like very forcefully pressure her damn near force her to take up with this like well-connected gentleman that they approve of but he is terrible you guys oh Toby is about to jump out of my arms he is literally the worst and she just basically through their machinations she basically just realizes through their machinations that this is just not it and she just grows a lot from the experience and she basically in the end removes herself from the situation and decides to take responsibility for herself and live her own life and chase her own happiness and she does that by discovering love with a man whose like very essence reminds her of a room with a view Mm -hmm. highly recommend definitely go pick this one up and it's short it's quick it's sweet it's poignant it's beautiful and it takes place in Italy do it had to let him go he was driving me insane next up is one of my favorite 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 classics of all time and this is sense and sensibility by Jane Austen I had a brain fart for just a second Jane Austen sense and sensibility it's one of my favorites by her I do kind of lean more towards Pride and Prejudice in some ways and in other ways I lean more towards this now this is basically a story about the Dashwood sisters we have Eleanor and Marianne Dashwood and they kind of go through something pretty traumatic at the beginning of the story their father has just died and the three Dashwood girls there is a littler sister Eleanor and Marianne, I can't remember the littlest sister's name. Oh well. But their father dies in the very beginning and his and their brother, their older brother, different mom, 
basically comes to take over the estate and he comes with his wife who's just like evil shrew of a woman but anyways he comes to take over the estate and they pretty much get kicked out of the estate because estates are passed from father to son and so they become disinherited in a way and they're the father leaves them something, or rather he leaves instructions for his son to take care of his second wife and his daughters with her. But of course the son and his wife due to greed and all sorts of things pretty much just delegate like literally like almost near pennies to these women that were used to living such like a um, affluent lifestyle with but once their father dies you know their their brother is just greedy and so he basically just gives them this stipend and this allowance that is near pennies that they really can't live off of and so overnight they are delegated to a much lower social class than what they were used to it's actually really sad and it's a great social commentary on like how women can't really own property and how women are often like disinherited and cheated out of property and, and um, fortune and social status because you know if the man in their life that is affording them all of these things passes away and there is no stipulation for them they're just kind of out in the cold. But I digress. <laughs> so the story basically proceeds as the Dashwood sisters, their mom's cousin just takes pity on them and is like, hey, come live on my cottage, on my property. Like, I won't charge you that much for it. So now they're living in a tiny little cottage. It's, it's really interesting, but it just talks about just social mores and customs at that time. Um, of course, there is like a lot of interesting intricate things going on in terms of like love and how to navigate love when it comes to class and you know upward mobility and you know how women are expected to behave and how women are expected to marry up and and marry for money and social comfort and you know social mobility and not necessarily for love and the story with um marianne dashwood and Willoughby is so tragic. If you haven't read it, you should read it just for that. Um, and then there is a happy ending, of course, but the things that go on, <laughs> it's actually very dramatic. Compared to Pride and, Pride and Prejudice, this book is a lot more dramatic, a lot more scandalous things happen, a lot more tea, uh, if you will. But yeah, I really recommend it. It's really good with a lot of great social commentary on the time and just like feminist social commentary as well. I keep saying social commentary, but you guys know what I mean. Recommend. Next up, I have one of my absolute favorite reads of all time, and this is Anne of Green Gables. Now, this is the beginning of a series, but I think this is a great, like, one-off. Like, you can just read this, and you can read it as a standalone, and you don't have to continue on with the series. You don't have to continue to watch Anne grow up. I mean, why wouldn't you? But you could totally just read this one and be satisfied and happy with how it ends and how it wraps up. But yeah, so this classic by Ellen Montgomery is such a good one. You get to kind of navigate life with Anne as she goes to live with relations due to circumstances in her life and just kind of see her come out of her shell and blossom. And she's such a kind, sweet, introverted, and yet she learns to be social soul and she's very sensitive and intuitive and she makes great connections with people and it's interesting to see the way that she's treated because once again of her social class and her social situation and how she navigates that and as a child how like she kind of how like the, the way the adults treat her and see her it's interesting to see it through her eyes as a child in this time but i really do recommend this i freaking love this book i actually am due for a reread it's one of my absolute favorites and if you have not read it yet i definitely think it's time to pick it up next up we have the glass castle by jeanette walls and this is a family drama if if I've never seen it and it's very poignant I believe it is a true story and it is a memoir and it just delves so deeply into the ideas of like childhood trauma and how we carry those traumas and how we deal with those traumas and how you know so many of our wounds and so many of the things that we carry with us have a lot to do what we with what we experienced in childhood with the people who were entrusted to care for us and kind of nourish us and build us as children whether they be parents or guardians until we become of age and the ways that we we kind of the ways that we developed to cope and to manage our pain and our disappointments and our traumas and the ways that we kind of not necessarily like erase history but manipulate history and 
the ways that like psychologically we go about trying to kind of restructure things in order to help us like mentally get through situations. I don't know if that made any sense, but I think that that just encapsulates this book in a nutshell. And um, of course I could read the back for you and I could read you the synopsis. Hey, dogs drive me crazy. What else is name? But um, I will leave all these books um, in the description box, I will, I will leave the links to Goodreads in the description box, as it always is. You can go check it out, um, but yes, so, so good. Definitely kind of a trigger warning if you grew up in a household with like mental abuse, slight physical abuse. Um, if you grew up in a, in a household with people who abused substances, trigger warnings for that, but so good, you guys, so good. Next up, I have a brilliant story, what? Fairy tale retelling. I can't talk, you guys. Fairy tale retelling, and this is Spindles End by Robin McKinley, and it is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. And this one, I will say, it's a little difficult to get into at first, but once you do get into it, you get into it. And I highly recommend it. Um, I'm not gonna go into it. We all know the Sleeping Beauty story. There are some twists and turns, and there are some things that aren't like in the Disney version, obviously, because this is bastardized Disney version. So this is closer to the original fairy Tale. On the back it says, we will keep her safe. All the creatures of the forest and field and riverbank knew the infant was special. She was the princess, spirited away from the evil fairy Pernicia on her name day. But the curse was cast. Rosie was fated to prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and fall into a poisoned sleep, a slumber from which no one would be able to rouse her. And then the Chicago Tribune blurbs, we think we know the end of the story, but still we're drawn forward by the small variations and twists, satisfying reading, pleasing in the depth of the weaving and elaboration. Further blurbs, rich prose and colorful description keep readers spellbound. That was Rocky Mountain Views. And lastly, Publishers Weekly says, mythic grandeur with magical detail and all too human feeling. Definitely recommend this for those who enjoy their fairy tale retellings. This one is masterfully done. Now, this next one is the one I warned y'all about. This is more towards the beachier side, but still kind of heavier, weightier topic. As you can see, it's quite thick. I've recommended this book various times on my channel in the past, ever since the inception of my channel, and this is Watermelon by Marion Keyes. Now, Marion Keyes is, I wanna say she's an Irish writer. She kind of writes their version of chick lit, if you will. I think that the Irish slash British and UK writers do it a lot better, in my opinion, than American writers, that whole chick lit thing. But I really highly enjoy her books. I pretty much read all Marion Keys, um, at least her backlog. Maybe not so much her recent works, but Watermelon was fabulous. I first read it when I was in high school, I wanna say, towards the end of my high school career, and I've reread it numerous times over the years. But this book has one of the most explosive openings of a novel ever, and it basically opens up with our main female protagonist um, giving birth <laughs> and finding out that her husband has just left her and she has to navigate being a new mother and you know going through a divorce and a separation with this man that she thought she would always be with. You kind of get a flashback or various flashbacks into their relationship, how they met, how it was this whirlwind love story and they were kind of like the couple goals of their friend group and everyone thought that they were meant to be, that they were soulmates. And you get to kind of navigate Claire, I think, yeah, Claire's just like pain and her struggles and her being a new mother and her life falling apart and her having to move back in with her parents. And her, her parents are very eccentric people and she has like four other sisters, I think, either three or four other sisters and they're all very different and one sister still lives at home and there are other books, by the way, that follow the other sisters if you read this one and you get interested. So you'll get to know more about the other sisters if you read their books and, of course, their lives. But you kind of get to see Claire kind of rise from the ashes a bit and find her inner bad bitch, okay? And find her inner boss and just boss up on the situation. Like, start to own motherhood. Start to own her faults in her relationship falling apart. But also like taking off the rose colored glasses and like seeing the red flags for what they were and starting to like put the blame on him where it needs to be put and then of course there is a new relationship on the horizon for her as well so it is very satisfying to read through very cathartic i just really enjoy this read and highly recommend next up i have the alchemist by Paolo, Paolo Coelho, I always struggle saying his name. And this was a little bit different. This is the graphic novel. Yes, there is a graphic novel of The Alchemist. It has beautiful illustrations, you guys. I really do recommend the graphic novel. 
Oh, so good. <laughs> Definitely a different medium for y'all to explore the story and kind of like encapsulates the actual book, but in a much more artistic and colorful way, obviously. But this is a classic and this is just another way to enjoy it. So if you've already read The Alchemist, then I would really recommend this. It is just another way to really enjoy, you know, a read that you've probably already enjoyed. And if you have not read The Alchemist, you can still pick this up and still get like the meat of the story along with some beautiful artwork. But not least is one of my absolute favorite reads of all time. And this is Little Bee by Clis Chris Cleave. Now, this book is very interesting because Chris Cleave is a white male author writing about POC characters and specifically African characters and a very specific African story, very specific West African story. And the way it was done was so amazing. I really enjoyed this read. I thought it was masterfully done. You could definitely tell that Chris Cleave did a lot of research, if not knew, you know, this similar story. But I highly recommend Little B. I think everyone should read it. And like I said, I'm not against, you know, non-POC writing about POC characters. I just think you really have to do a lot of research and make sure you know what you're talking about. Um, make sure you're not falling into cliches and those type of dangerous like landmines and pitfalls. But this is a way to do it right. Um, on the back, it says, we don't want to tell you what happens in this book. It is a truly special story and we don't want to spoil it. Nevertheless, you need to know enough to buy it, so we'll just say this. This is the story of two women. Their lives collide one fateful day, and one of them has to make a terrible choice, the kind of choice we hope you never have to face. Two years later, they meet again. The story starts there. Once you have read it, you'll want to tell your friends about it. When you do, please don't tell them what happens. The magic is in how the story unfolds, and how true that is, you guys. When I picked this up years ago, and 2014 or 15 I want to say I had no idea I had no idea I just went into it blind and that was the best way to go into it so try to avoid like Amazon reviews Goodreads reviews etc Barnes and Nobles you know all that good stuff and just go into it and you will definitely not regret it done but I have two more sorry about that guys I have big magic this is creative living beyond fear by Elizabeth Gilbert and Elizabeth Gilbert of course wrote eat pray love and big magic is a nonfiction I thought I would throw a nonfiction read in here for those of you that really take the summer to recharge refresh especially those of you that maybe are teachers and you're off in the summer or if you have a job that allows you a little bit more freedom like summer Fridays in the office but you basically just have more spare time this is a great way to kind of reset your brain especially if you are creative and you do anything creative whether it be reading which is creative writing any form of art anything like that then this is definitely right up your alley i think elizabeth Bil Gil <laughs> gilbert really says some truly thought-provoking things in this read and it really helps you to clear your mind and kind of makes you want to take that leap beyond fear and to keep pushing with whatever creative work that you are doing so i highly rec recommend this non-fiction read this summer this is the final book we have come to the end and i am recommending a play is the search for signs of intelligent life in the universe by jane wagner and i just remember reading this years ago and finding it absolutely genius and hilarious and poignant and touching and brilliant and spellbinding and just oh all the things all the things i highly recommend this play on the back it just says a work of genius and compassion and that is blurbed by the like indomitable gloria steinem it says poignant sharp and laugh out loud funny the search for signs of intelligent life in the universe first took broadway by storm in 1985 and became an instant bestseller the dramatic tour de force garnered numerous awards for playwright jane wagner and accolades for star lily tomlin including a tony for best actress as a moving critique of modern society this barbed but humane play continues to resonate with truth and accuracy today in a special afterward, cultural icons and influencers, Eve Ensler, who um, created the Vagina Monologues, Jane Fonda, Jane Fonda, and Whoopi Goldberg, legend, Jodie Foster, another legend, and others share their thoughts on how this classic affected their own lives and ours. 
And just in blurbs, the San Francisco Chronicle says, Wagner's brilliant wit and staggering breadth of knowledge combine quantum physics with biting satire to create one of the funniest, most visionary and original works produced on Broadway in years. Um, we also have Washington Post, a hilarious saga of dreams collapsing, sexual arrangements backfiring, good intentions souring, and bad bandwagons careening off the track. The Search dot, 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 is a compendium of pop history, a living anthropological exhibit, but it is also a chronicle of the human heart trying to mend its bruises and ease its disappointments, and that makes it sublime. Catch your breath, sublime. And lastly, the New York Times, a rich tapestry, stunningly ambitious. Jane Wagner sums up a generation of social history into a tightly compressed saga. You guys, you guys. If you don't take any play recommendations from me, like while you're watching my channel, which by the way, I'm gonna start doing those, take this one. So good, so good. This is it, you guys, the summer reading list for those who are either not a fan of summer, not a fan of the heat, or just not a fan of beach reads. So here they are in all their glory. I think these are all of them. I hope I'm not missing one. I am a room with a view. Now here are all of them. Try to hold them up for your viewing pleasure. Let me know which ones out of the list, or if more than one, have piqued your interest. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah. Bye. But I got two of her books right here. I want to show you guys. I got to put this little guy down. Are you going to behave? Hmm? Are you going to behave? Right here, I have got Allegedly. And I also have her newest one, Let Me Hear a Rhyme. Let Me Hear a Rhyme is actually on my TBR for the month. So I will be reading this one. And then at some point, I will tackle Allegedly. And then I think she has another book out. Correct me if I'm wrong, something about black girls going missing. I can't remember the title of it right now, but from those who've read it, they said that it changed them. So, a little terrified to read it.